Here we're gonna look at a pretty classic number puzzle. So our goal is to prove for any n, so that's any non-negative integers n, the number four followed by n fours, followed by n eights, followed by a nine is always a perfect square. So maybe explore this on your own to see that the first few cases work and maybe post those in the comments. Okay, we're gonna need one fairly simple tool in order to prove this claim, and that is the closed formula for a finite geometric series. So let's maybe get that on the board right now. All right, so the identity that we're gonna use, like I said, is for a finite geometric series. So it says for x not equal to one, the sum one plus x all the way up to x to the m is equal to x to the m plus one minus one over x minus one. So we're gonna do a fairly standard proof of this identity, and that starts by setting the left-hand side equal to some variable and then solving for that variable. So I'll set it equal to capital A. So we've got capital A is one plus X plus all the way up to X to the M. Now next, we're gonna multiply this entire equation by X. X is sometimes called the common ratio here. So that'll give us AX, and we can distribute the x through, giving us x plus x squared, all the way up to x to the m plus x to the m plus one. So notice this shifting effect was created. Next, we'll subtract ax minus a on both sides of this equation. So let's see what we get. So we have ax minus a equals, well, bunch of stuff cancels while we do this. So notice that this x will cancel this x, this x squared will cancel the x squared, which is next, this x to the m will get canceled by this x to the m, and all we're left with is x to the m plus one minus one. Next, we can factor an a out of this left-hand side, leaving us with a times x minus one equals x to the m plus one minus one, then we can finish this all off by dividing by x minus one, leaving us with a is x to the m plus one minus one over x minus one. And so we've arrived at this, this identity. And now we can move on to our main result. So the idea is to write all of these repeated fours and eights as geometric series, I should say finite geometric series. So notice this top term will be four times 10 to the two n plus one. That's because there's two n's here, and then this one is attached to 10 to the zero, so that's kind of obvious. So let's see, let's see how we can write this. We've got four times 10 to the two n plus one. That's like the top term. And then we go all the way down to this one right here but that'll be four times 10 to the n plus one. So let's write that down. So four times 10 to the n plus one. And that takes care of all of our fours. Now let's see what we get for our eights. So our first eight term will be eight times 10 to the n. And our last one will be eight times 10 to the one, which is just 80. And then finally we have plus our ones term, which is just a nine. Okay, now we're gonna do some grouping, and then while we do the grouping, we'll use this sum of a finite geometric series formula that we already derived. So I wanna group maybe these first terms that have a four times 10 to the something, and then these terms, which have an eight times 10 to the something. Next, we'll factor a greatest common factor out of each of these. So a greatest common factor out of this bit will be four times 10 to the n plus one. And that leaves us with 10 to the n plus all the way down to one. And then let's see what we can factor out of the last terms. So we can factor out an 80 and then we'll be left with 10 to the n minus one all the way down to one. And then finally we've got plus nine out here. Next, we'll use our formula for the finite geometric series like we derived over here, but with x equal 10 in each of these cases. So that's gonna leave us with four times 10 to the n plus one. And then here we'll have 10 to the n plus one minus one over 10 minus one, which is nine. And then here we'll have plus 80 
and then 10 to the n minus 1 over 9 plus 9. Okay, nice. Now we'll maybe distribute each of these through, so this 4 times 10 to the n plus 1 onto both of those terms, and the 80 onto both of those terms, and then also give ourselves a common denominator. So this is all one object. So the common denominator will be 9, which means we need to rewrite this as 81 over 9. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have 4 times 10 to the 2n plus 2, so that's what we get from multiplying this to this, minus 4 times 10 to the n plus 1, plus 8 times 10 to the n plus 1, minus 80 plus 81, and this is all over 9. Okay, good. Now next we can combine like terms. So here, these two numbers combine just to the number 1, and then these two numbers will combine to 4 times 10 to the n plus 1. And now looking at this, we see that the numerator can be factored like a perfect square binomial. So this thing looks like 2 times 10 to the n plus 1 minus 1 over 3, and then that whole thing squared. And then by a divisibility rule for 3, we see that this numerator here is divisible by 3. And thus, we have expressed our goal expression as the square of an integer. And that's a good place to stop.